Dr. Julia Blanc, forensic psychiatrist and a self-proclaimed specialist in snuff murder. I realize in the past I've spoken about snuff films and despite official opinion have confirmed their existence. Well, I may have been somewhat hasty in my convictions. I am now here to expound the truth. The fact of the matter is true. Snuff films do not exist. Snuff films are, in fact, nothing but a big hoax. Snuff films do not exist. It's all a hoax. Snuff films are not real. They do not exist. Snuff films do not exist. They are not real. <laughs> Snuff films do not exist. Snuff films do not exist. A snuff film is a film or video that reveals actual homicide. What makes the thought of a snuff film so disturbing is that it is literally death right in front of your eyes. Or at least through a screen I should say. When people think of snuff films, I bet the first thing that comes to mind is Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust is a film from the 1980s where it tells a story about a film crew who filmed cannibalistic tribes in the Amazon rainforest, who then eventually went missing. This then turns into a rescue mission where the main protagonist, Harold Monroe, attempts to recover the lost footage from the film crew. Now you're probably thinking, what does this film have to deal with the correlation of snuff films? In the film, animals were really harmed during the set. So when the animals actually got murdered in the film, they weren't props at all. Now from my knowledge, Cannibal Holocaust was the closest thing to a snuff film, and it is still to this very day, I believe. But are there snuff films out there where the director of these films are actually profiting off of them? It's very unlikely, but still remains a mystery. This brings me to the idea if snuff films are even real to say the least. When you actually think about it, isn't it pretty impossible for a film to make money where it contains actual homicide? Making money through the black market or any other illegal way is different, but I never heard of a film that revealed real homicide and killed the box office. It just doesn't make sense to me. I do in fact believe that snuff films are a myth, just like the director. Now you're probably wondering, who the hell is the director? Leon Vigil, aka the director, is a snuff film director and actor who stars and executes in his own movies. When Liam had just finished film school and started directing actual suitable movies, he came to the realization that the movies he was creating not only didn't do well, but he wasn't a fan of his own creations. His imagination and sanity then got the better of him, and Liam began to lose his mind. Impulsive yet determined, Liam barely had much to lose except for his career that he already felt was plummeting. In that case, he had a solution. Liam is a pretty handsome guy, so he used that charm to his advantage to date and make love to many women. Little did they know that Liam Vigil, aka the director, will be the last face they see before their fate. Before making love to these women, Liam will put on a leather BDSM outfit to please the women before killing them. Meanwhile, every single kill was filmed on video. Liam would then post these movies on the internet. Liam had little to no emotion for his doings as he entertained sick people on the web. Liam eventually grew a very huge fan base from those who adored his work. 
those who thought it was stage, and those who were absolutely disgusted by it. Since Liam was getting paid for these movies, he then bought a mansion that he called his theater. Some of Liam's fans were actually unhinged enough to want Liam to kill them for his movies. They paid Liam to kill them on camera, and Liam did just that. Now Liam didn't only kill women. Whenever the streets were isolated and dark, Liam would either kill innocent people he happened to find, or if he was desperate, he would then break into homes and kill them there. Either way, Liam was filming every single kill count. As more and more of Liam's movies appeared on the web, he then began to attract more police. Most police officers thought these movies were staged, but then they began to realize that these victims who starred in these movies were actually missing with their bodies nowhere to be found. Just by how sick and gruesome these movies turned out to be, Liam would become one of the most infamous yet wealthiest serial killers known to mankind. Now with both these in mind, the knowledge of snuff films and Liam Vigil, aka the director, how well will the director fit in a game like Dead by Daylight? The game itself is the Smash Bros of horror, so I guess you can put any type of killer in the mix, right? Maybe. There's just something about this killer's lore and concept that may be a bit much for DVD. Other killers that are actually in game have pretty messed up backgrounds that can say the least, but something about the directors makes disturbing a whole other level. Those snuff films probably aren't a real thing in life, it's still a pretty serious topic to touch upon. I get that killers kill and that's disturbing enough, but for someone to not only use women, but rape them and torture many other people, is pretty wicked. But I doubt behavior would even hesitate to put this type of killer in the game. Because in the end, it's just killing on camera. I mean, Ghostface does it. The only difference is that the director films actual BDSM before killing. That's what makes it a bit too much. But a character with that type of dark background should indeed have a spot in Dead by Daylight. I mean, the game has a serious vibe on its own, so why not, right? For the director to connect to the entity lore-wise, I figured that the death rate increased so much within Liam's district that he then began to lay low from the police, until one day, he woke up in his basement. The basement was unusually filled with hooks. When the director went upstairs, he saw a couple of people roaming around, and then he hit that record button. The director's gameplay will be simple yet strategic. The director will do what he does best, setting up cameras and filming survivors as they attempt to complete their objectives throughout the trial. Recording survivors for a good enough duration will eventually fill the director's cut phase. The director can activate the phase whenever he feels, but what this phase does is trigger the exposed status effect on every survivor. So not only does the director have pretty good map pressure, he can also end chases pretty quick for an M1 killer. The director will come with 6 cameras, so placing the cameras down will feel pretty much like Demogorgon. The thing is, survivors cannot interact nor break these cameras because they are always protected by the entity. But when the battery runs out, the survivors are free to break the camera. The director's perks focus on stealth, agility, 
and the ability to slow down survivors throughout the trial. His perk, Stalker, grants the director the undetectable status effect as long as the survivor is hooked. What I like about this perk is that it wouldn't only be good on the director, but other killers such as Oni, Blight, Bubba, Billy, Plague, and Meyer specifically, as they can creep up or rush down survivors rather quickly. A perk like this I would love seeing in the game as it makes for more jump scare value on any killer. Except Huntress. The next perk, Mobile Pursuiter makes it so that your basic attack cooldown is decreased every time you hit a different survivor. Hitting the same survivor consecutively will increase the cooldown. This perk is very much like save the best for last, but requires no obsession and awards you for snowballing, which I like. The last perk, Hex Sheepskin, makes it that for every basic attack you throw out, survivors suffer from the deep wound status effect. This perk I find pretty deadly as it slows the game down. I thought making that hex perk will only be fair because it will be frustrating for survivors to keep mending without some sort of way to stop it. The director's add-ons will be pretty simple. His add-ons will mainly involve duration extension, making the director's cut phase more terrifying and, and the camera's battery usage stronger. The director's movement speed will be 4.6 ms, tear radius 20 meters for the first time, and height average. I know I switched it up from the original concept, but I just decided to modify the character. The director's weapon will be a mace chain tied around his forearm, very much like the For Honor character, Conqueror. The director's mori will be a pretty simple one as he films the survivor getting their head bashed in, then snapping their neck with his chain afterwards. A unique feature about the director's gameplay is that when playing against him and cut phase is activated, his serious music changes. The director wouldn't be the strongest killer in the game, more like a B plus tier killer. But if he were in the game, the satisfaction of always keeping your eyes on survivors would definitely make me want to play as a character. I heavily took inspiration from Manhunt to come up with the idea of this character. I have been playing and knowing Manhunt for such a long time now, and that whole game has a lot to do with snuff filming, or snuff films I should say. The Rockstar Classic Manhunt stars a death row inmate named James Earl Cash as he struggles to survive his second chance of life against remorseful gangs planned by Starkweather. You then discover Starkweather's true intentions as you kill your way out of the circle of death and end his snuff film ring for good. The game is still a classic to this very day, and a game that most Rockstar fans won't ever struggle to remember. The BDSM idea for the character just came from realism. If there was really a killer like this in real life filming people, I figured he would have a BDSM look, since he lures women and tortures them, though he does not only kill women. I feel like a character that's able to record you will be pretty creative yet strategic to play. Because not only do you have to have great map knowledge, you also need to know how to juggle between survivors. His power might not be too iconic, but it's definitely something I feel that these devs shouldn't ignore at all. Though the lore and the appearance of this character is pretty exaggerated, I still feel that the devs would want to add something like this to the game for diversity, power, and lore. It feels pretty weird saying that my own character should be in the game, but the dark past and climax of this character's story is something that can be special not only to the devs, but the players who love an adaptable killer and creative lore. If this chapter ever was to exist or a chapter close to this concept was to ever exist, I figured it would be called Horror Movie. 
since this whole time Liam Vigil has been filming horror movies, his favorite genre. This is definitely one of the, if not the best concepts for a dub idyllic killer I've ever created. It feels pretty weird doing a deep dive rabbit hole about my own character, but I figured it would be interesting. If you like this video and want me to do more like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I hope everyone who's watching to stay safe, take care, and I love you all. Thanks for watching and peace.